Hey there folks, and welcome back to the Ikenia campaign. Last time, we took care of the cultural instability going on in Ossesimia and Armorica. Although we will have to switch back over to harsh treatment in Armorica, I may have overestimated how ready the area is for local autonomy, even with the work that we've done to make the Armorican people a little less uh, incensed with us. So we'll see what happens here, but in the meantime, we're going to resume. My very, very slow march towards uh, Brenna, uh, Bauna Kalata coming of age is ongoing. We still have about nine months or so until we reach that point. Let's look at this event here. Arrival at court. L lately, our king, Wasenius I, Dewekis the Gaul, has come into conflict with Ariadrahad or Kea at every turn and decision, their opinions persistently clashing. If one of them says south, the other will promptly say north. If one wants to trade with a neighbor, the other will argue for war. This constant bickering is ruining whatever authority Wasenius used to have, and the atmosphere in Londinium is at a breaking point. Okay, so I seem to recall a similar event happening between um, uh, his father and Ariana Hot as well, so this is a little, a little unfortunate. I could see her as a rival. She is the steward, so not the most ideal situation. But, and she's also the head of the Urkii family, let's not forget, so we really don't want her to be super disloyal. She's actually probably one of our few family heads, uh, historically, who is not currently disloyal, incredibly. I think I'll just have to take the, uh, the popularity loss here. I can't afford to have the head of a family be my rival. That's just asking for trouble, so let's uh, play around that just to be safe. Yeah, so the other thing we're going to do this episode is um, ooh, finish that training camp in Ablania. Very good. Let's watch our manpower per month rise even further, which we love to see. Yeah. Um, and over here we're building one, building two in fact, in uh, Londinium. Once we have a third, once we have enough money to build a third one, I will do that. Yes, I know that I am missing out on research by abandoning my academy and court of law focus here in Londinium. But I do think that ultimately having uh, better manpower is going to be more important at this stage of the game. We're not really in a, a tech race with anybody specifically, but we are in a manpower race with everybody specifically when it comes to fighting and wars and whatnot, so let's uh, be careful. Okay, so it looks like we do have another proposal uh, thing here. Let's take a look and see who we have. We had a similar event a couple episodes ago, but this time it's uh, our almost rival, Ariana Hod, doing the proposal with a, a new person here. Looks like she has offered up... Um, who is this? Uh, Lover Niska, which is quite the name for a proposal person. She has okay stats. Let's compare her to our our young uh, target over here, whose uh, charisma is looking pretty solid. I think she's had the ambition to become a politician. She's looking on track with uh, her, her stats here. Her finesse is not so impressive. Uh, Lover Niska's, I guess, to be technical, her, her name would be uh, uh, Lower Niska. Uh, her um, her uh, finesse is better, which I do care about. Her zeal is worse, but her the bad charisma. Because if we recall, um, Wasenius, his charisma is actually pretty bad, to be fair. So uh, he'd still have the better marshal, because of course he has a good marshal. He wouldn't get any boost to his zeal. He would get a boost to his uh, finesse, um, uh, but the charisma would not be modified. So he would get the better finesse, and he would get... Uh, that's basically it, actually. And a guaranteed partner here, because this character through event is for sure not married. And if we were to miscalculate the day that we click on this character, she'd marry some geriatric uh, old man immediately. So what's the what's the, uh, the right play here? So we could immediately do this. We would actually, for what it's worth, get a lot of clout with the Urkii by doing this, because this is their scheme. Get loyalty with Ariana Hod, which would be pretty nice. As she is fairly old, but she's not super old. She is only in her late 60s. She's likely to stick around for another 10 years, probably, on average. I'd lose some loyalty with uh, the other family heads, it looks like, who are already... One of whom, uh, Dewey, Dewey Kiakis, is already disloyal. Akissa Welda, her loyalty is pretty fine. Or, okay, this is actually a little irritating, if we decline this, we actually do suffer loyalty problems and prestige problems with the Urkii. I think, um, and yes, you know, 25 is probably on the upper edge of what I would agree to for a 20-year-old male character. 
I think, though, this is probably the right call, even though Bana does have that really nice, um, uh, the really nice charisma. Well, charisma is going to affect for Wasenius to get better charisma from going with the original plan is tyranny loss um, and claim fabrication speed. Not stats I highly prioritize. However, with finesse, build cost, national commerce income, this is why, by the way, I've fixated on finesse so much for my my consort, because their better skills improve your skills, uh, like in the Crusader Kings games. Those are the two modifiers I probably make the most use of in my, my playstyle. So, looks like a uh, lover Niska or a uh, lower Niska is going to go ahead and become my wife after all. There it is. So let's go ahead and uh, stop looking at this teenager, as we probably ought to. <laughs> it's probably good advice to do it like that. And here we have ourselves a serene consort, Lower Niska. There she is. How does she feel about us? Um, do I see her opinion of me? I don't know if actually, what am I talking about? Characters don't have opinions of each other. I was just talking about Crusader Kings, so I was thinking like a Crusader Kings player for a moment there. She's unhappy about her tyranny, but so is everybody. And aside from that, her loyalty is basically secure, which is what I'd hope for the consort. I could become friends with her, which seems to be probably a good call, given that she's going to be, you know, my consort. Um, and we now, and I guess I should note, uh, now that we, I think for the first time in the series, we actually have another family in the royal system, as it were, with the Urkii now having a member in the household, um, which should secure their loyalty a little bit which is good. I've tried to avoid uh, favoring any of these families over the other because that just seems to be uh, asking for trouble. The Urkei are one of the bigger families, which in this game means they're going to have more characters with more power base being thrown around. So it's good to be on their good side. Um, although I think at this point, everyone except the Diwikai family are basically the same size. So it is what it is. We may have to deal with this disloyalty problem as... Uh, although actually, no, our power base uh, situation is fine. I guess with the Urkii being happier, that may have solved problems I was even thinking about. So, and like I noted last or two episodes ago, all of those uh, characters that we invited to our court, they're all hanging around with zero power base, not affecting my threshold at all. So we're good with that. Okay, so uh, let's see here. Um, so now we do have a wife. Uh, she's uh, her age is fine for for these purposes. Um, let's go ahead and try and become her friend. Attempt to make friends with uh, Lower Niska Urkii. We don't need to be friends with our spouse, um, you know, especially in this time period, but it's probably a good idea to be on good terms with this person who's quite uh, close to us and may have access to some of our vulnerabilities. So if successful with Sinius, the Gaul will become friends with Lower Niska Urkii. All right, that's that. Now that we've got our marriage situation figured out, kind of uh, unexpectedly, uh, without any big like plans coming to fruition or, or anything, um, we can proceed. I should note as well that um, here in uh, Dia Blintum, this is not going to be the permanent capital. This is just what we have currently. And since it was already fortified, I decided to not move it around. So that's why. The Gladiator. Okay, so now we can do the friendship events all over again that we just did uh, last episode or two episodes ago. Uh, let's see here. Um, again, probably best to go for the better outcome options here. I, I did my whole rant, I think it was last episode. I don't, I, time is meaningless <laughs> in my lifestyle. Um, I think that we need to go for the better outcome events for the reasons I talked about last time, because uh, these are just a bunch of dice rolls in succession, so no need to play around that. Um, we'll just spend the political influence. That's a shame, but. You know, we'll get it back pretty soon. And we're not using it at any for any super important things right now. Looks like uh, local autonomy over here is doing fine. Here it's almost doing fine, although we are going to add to this territory pretty soon. And over here, it is basically stable. All right. And, uh, yeah. Got our stuff being built up. Very good. Did we already move slaves in here? We did. Okay. We're going to have more iron and more um, more precious metals soon. Uh, political ambitions. It is well known that Lower Niska Urkii has been seeking a particular government office for some time. Until now, she has been passed over unjustly in favor of others. Looks like she does want to be the chief physician. Is that what this office is called? The physician. Okay. So uh, this character is one of those uh, loyalty 
those ambiguously loyal uh, Dewey Kai characters who, because of those events uh, a couple years ago, uh, I guess just will never be loyal to the Dewey Kai family ever again. So having my consort be the physician, not the worst call. She doesn't exactly have amazing charisma, or is it charisma? Actually, hold on. What? I think it's charisma that the physician uses. Yeah, it's uh, it's charisma. So maybe not the smartest choice. Um, I guess that is her best uh her best uh, attribute, so to be fair, um, I guess that makes sense. I think the physician is a fairly safe government office to give to someone who's not the most competent. Not to say that she's incompetent, but she's just not the most competent of all the uh, the finesse characters I have roaming around. So this is probably pretty okay to do. This will also... Uh, okay, this is actually, interestingly, part of the befriending event chain, because this is giving me a large amount of progress towards the befriending outcome. I'm going to lose loyalty with that guy, but once he's out of office, his power base will plummet, so that should be fine. Lose more political influence and gain five tyranny for doing this, so I think it's probably fine. Um, this character is also fairly old and not... what's his power base like? It's just from being a physician. I think we can probably get away with this. Alright, uh, we've appointed her the physician. Very, very good. She's, by the way, I, I would like her to be in government in some form, um, and I guess I should actually check and see. She is a member of the Urkii family, so even though she's the wife of the king, the game still considers her to be in the Urkii family, so that's good to know. That may be relevant later. So now the Diwikais, though, are upset. Uh, all right. Um, I do have to address this, because otherwise we're going to have... Uh, we're near the threshold now with this. Okay, who can I, who can I deal with here? I think... Who's the most important Diwikai? I think Diana is probably pretty important to get on the good side of, because she is my chancellor, and she's a very good chancellor with that great uh, persuasion. Or, uh, excuse me, charisma. Um, what do I do? So, I would like to just bribe her. However, um, well, that being said, only for a couple years. Uh, her corruption is already pretty severe because she's crafty. I think I'll just give her free hands. I'm not going to be able to ever address this corruption, so I may as well spend corruption to get loyalty. So I'll give her free hands. That'll get her happy. I still need, though, to fix the scorn problem, because that is going to affect... Um, what's it called? Uh, everyone's loyalty, anyways. Alright, so let's go ahead and see what we can do here. Actually, let's look at it like this. Uh, who are... So you're pretty old, you have pretty bad stats overall. You're a pretender as well, okay. You're already a governor, you you were just fired. Actually, with your really, really good uh, finesse, you'd make for a good governor, so maybe I can make you a governor somewhere. Although, with your loyalty problems, you would probably just make that area disloyal, so I'm not gonna do that after all. Anybody else who's competent? You, you've got okay stats. Six charisma. Let me check and see who what position is fairly like safe to give away right now. Um, my martial ones and high priest are a little uh, they're they're not high statesmanship. Also, I just put an Urki eye in charge so I can replace a different Urki eye, probably pretty safely. All right, um, let's see here. Any Dewikai? Is is there any zeal anywhere in the Dewikai family? Any? Th that's it. Five. That's your best. With Donwin Diwikai. Diwika, I mean. Well, uh, what kind of power base do you have? You have zero power base. The, the issue is, if this doesn't make her personally loyal, she'll then gain power base as the High Priest, and then she'll become a disloyal character with a power base, as opposed to being a disloyal character with no power base. Okay, so let's let's go back to this option for Donwin. Um, we'll check that again in a moment. Let's check over on the Marshall side. We do have a couple of new young Marshall characters. Uh, I think... Mercenary Army Maintenance, this is a completely useless stat, or an almost useless stat for us. Okay, this is a bit more like it. We do have uh, Singetessa Diwika. She, her loyalties are actually already pretty good. Um, we could go to boost the loyalty of Lituist Diwika. Seven Marshal versus eight Marshal. Also, it looks like uh, this is my sister, Singetessa, that's right. I, I was trying to remember who the, who that uh, whose name that was. So her loyalty is basically secure forever. Um, and I would like to get her in government and get her involved in the state. I think that aside from the weird loyalty problems I had as Wasenius with my aunt, 
um, having your family members in the government as a monarchy is probably a good call because if there's some weird succession issue, they're going to be more experienced. They're going to have better, um, what's it called, statesmanship. So let's go ahead and make Singatessa the marshal, and that'll fix everything, essentially. So yeah, she'll have to build up her statesmanship, but a, a life in the marshalry is going to be good for her, probably. She's also the primary heir currently, for what it's worth, although that will hopefully change pretty soon. Let's take a look at her traits, actually. So she's skeptical. Um, so there's a loyalty malice right there. She's lustful, okay, and she's corrupt. Oh, jeez. Okay, so we have a lot of uh, corruption issues with her. What can I do about this corruption? I'm not sure I can do anything about this corruption. Is it? I almost wonder, is it worth going into um, high wages? Because I have so much corrupt, so many corruption issues. So I think we need to look at it on a character by character basis. So whose corruption would I really want to purge? Would probably be Singatessa because I want her to be a character in the government for a long time. So her base is 10, and she has gained 20 at some point from something, probably an event. So at least she's not crafty. I think if I was trying to deal with a crafty character, I just wouldn't bother, because it's just so expensive to purge that corruption through the um, uh, the higher wages mechanic. But with Singatessa having only a base 10, I think it is probably worth it. But then the issue is I'll also be paying everybody else a ton more as well. So let's see what that would look like. Okay, so uh, as expected, Singatessa... With her very high corruption, she's being paid the most currently. And it looks like uh, only a couple are above one. I think I'm willing to justify it if most of my characters are below one. I, this is purely, by the way, me just sort of like spitballing what looks right. I have no idea what the best sort of meta for this is. This is an area of the meta I just haven't really like taken the time to, to fully master yet. So, But key the key thing is all of our governors seem to be pretty uncorrupt, which is very, very important, because corruption and its relationship with loyalty is what really scares me when governors are corrupt. So, like, uh, so in fact, let's look over here. So, Bwiti Wikis, he's probably going to die fairly soon. He is in his late 60s. Oh, I just said earlier that a character in their late 60s probably isn't going to die soon, so what do I know? His corruption is because of free hands. Okay, so we probably can't switch that off because of his loyalty. Once we can bribe him, maybe we'll switch off free hands and then bribe him Either way, though, that's fine. Um, you have zero. You're also in Germania, which is not a super critical province to have a bad corruption. So, Belgica and then Armorica. All right, let's go ahead and uh, boost the wages, I think. Yeah, so that's pretty expensive, but I think it is worth cutting down on corruption. Um, corruption is just one of those mechanics where if you just ignore it, it's just going to, to pile up over time. And I mean, in real life, honestly, uh, a corrupt government is one of the reasons why real-life empires often uh, have trouble, including the, the Roman Empire in real history. So, anyways, let's do this. We may uh, only do this for a while. Um, this won't be the permanent thing, but um, I think it is worth uh, cutting away the corruption of some of our characters, and we have the economy to afford it. So, it's not like we need tons of money currently. I'd rather have a, a more secure government situation, because over time, you know, as our, our treasury gets more and more powerful, the bigger issue is going to end up being um, the competency and the loyalty of our characters. So, that's that. Now, um, we also need to wait till we do get... Um, what's it called? We need to get uh, political influence to get our claim on Tyronia. Now, we could look at this Matter of Caledonia mission that we're still in currently. I could abort the mission and see if we have missions on the mainland yet, but I still think we won't. Um, what we need to do here is make gains. Yeah, this is not going to happen. This requires a lot of colonization. Settle Wodadinia. Um, we need to have three cities in Wodadinia. That's going to take a while because we have Manawia right now, but that's it. Yeah, so these are all basically not very doable. We need um, this as well, it looks like, yeah. Okay, we'll come back to this later. The missions are not going to help us that much right now, essentially. Okay, um, what am I looking for here? Uh, government. We could do the Summon War Council, just to see if we get any free claims from this. Um, but then again, well, if it's a 10-year thing, 
I think what I might do is, I think it's probably a good idea to start doing this essentially on cooldown. Um, I haven't really thought to do this because I've just not really been in a situation without claims to work on, but this is probably a good thing to start doing on cooldown uh, since I haven't been doing it so far. But I'll start doing that, I think, um, in uh, 540, just so it's uh, on a timeline that's easier to remember than 37, 47, 57, if that makes sense. So, yeah, a little inefficient, but it's just going to be easier for me to keep track of, which is uh, ultimately a good thing. Everyone loves gold. All right, so we could give uh, Lower Niska a bunch of our money. We have plenty of money. She has almost no money, so that's fair enough. Um, we'll do the large amount one. All right, so what's the situation with Arwernia? Uh, they are allied with their allies. I mean, talk about a sentence that doesn't need to be said. Uh, they have the same allies as before, is what I mean to say. Not at war with anybody. Um, things look pretty stable. Unlikely, like I said before, to declare war on us, but it's it's possible, you know. Who can say for sure? With Brigantia, things are progressing upward. We need to hit 190 to start integrating them. And how far along are we through? Um, yeah, we need 190. Uh, if we wanted to... Like, how far along are we? For relations, maybe... I wish I could see on this menu how far along we are with improved relations. I mean, we can ultimately click this button to hit 190. Friendship with Lower Niska. Your effort to encourage a friendship between Wasenius and Lower Niska has paid off naturally. Heck yeah, there we go. It is based to be friends with your wife. That is a misadventure truism right there. You can take that one home with you. <laughs> Anyways, um, so that's great. Uh, that's going to secure her loyalty for sure, for sure. So that's good. Um, yeah, good stuff. Hopefully, uh, this is a friends with benefits type situation as she is my wife. So hopefully, um, we start to produce some heirs so my succession thing can be a little bit more secure. I mean, I do have a successor in my sister set up, so that's fine. But it'll be a little better just to know for sure there's ideally... Actually, male or female would be fine, as long as it's just the primary child or the first child of my royal couple here okay so lower niska i should note her character traits she's foolish which means she's more likely to engage in pit fighting okay let's try and persuade her not to do that and she's honest so monthly corruption minus 0.05 love to see that and uh, yeah so no no super alarming traits or anything that's all fine got our training camp done and i believe it's time for a third training camp here yeah i think it's worth it um, because it's 10% more, uh, 10% more manpower, so absolutely worth it. Um, yeah. Tech-wise, we're approaching a couple here. We should figure out what techs we're going for next as well. I think we were, we got that a while ago. Um, I think we got that one, yeah. Uh, let's see. Um, I could get a bunch of freemen and one free pr province investment, which means another free building. So that's, this is a really good one here. Plus the freemen all contribute manpower. Um, diplomatic range could be interesting. Dip rep is always good. Uh, I could lose aggressive expansion. At this point, I'm actually below 10, so this wouldn't even be at full value. Aggressive expansion change, that's always fine. Impact is good as well. Getting these subject opinion things as I'm about to integrate my my one subject I'll likely ever have is a little funny, but that would get us to things like uh, reduced intervention restrictions. Okay, fortress in in Gena is done. Very good. This is our next one of our next city locations as well. Um, we can expand into uh, Epidian Akron, and who's coming over here? They're from Manawia. Okay, very good. Manawi is doing pretty well. That's good to see. Is it worth building a training camp here? Is the interesting question. Uh, the issue is I'm only producing one manpower from here currently. So would a training camp boost it to two? Let's find out. 13 to 15 translates to one. So the training camp would eventually be valuable here, but not at the moment it would have zero effect. Um... Or what it it says plus one. Does that mean plus one actual manpower or what? Hmm. Uh 
I don't think it would actually mean plus one actual manpower. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to hold off on that one. I can build uh, those camps elsewhere. Um, let's see. The issue, too, is we need to build them in places with a lot of a Kenny, because those, those training camps are going to affect our integrated population predominantly. And they're not going to affect uh, non-integrated population. So Lania, I believe, does actually have a lot of a Kenny who live here. Yeah. Well, well, a lot of a Kenny citizens. So five a Kenny citizens, one a Kenny Freeman. And it does already have a training camp, though, to be fair. That's two. Yeah, that'd still be two. So let's look and so we need to look and see the actual impact of such a building. Uh, let's see. I'm gonna take a norm. Plus one. It's probably not gonna be worth it. Hmm. We have a lot of a Kenny living here. Alright, let's hold off on that for now. It's good to have a little bit of money. Also, uh, colonization. Should we colonize into here? This is in Taxalia, so this would establish a protonic presence in Taxalia, which could be good, as we do want to eventually turn our attention up here. Who's living here currently? We got four uh, Taxalia, three ta one Taxalian, and three Damnonians up here. I suppose we should go for it. All right, so now we finally have a presence up here in Taxalia. Very good. So does this mean? there is value in going up here. We do actually have a Cassus Belli already on Carwetia. Who's Carwetia friends with? They're allied with Caledonia and they're in a defensive league with Taxalia. So we could bring in most of the northern tribes in one fell swoop. Uh, let's see. Or I go ahead, I give a gift to Brigantia and then start integrating them right now. I mean, I could do both these things at the same time, to be fair. How far along are we through here? Um, I think we should just go for it. Let's start the process. Start integration. We have to wait until the 26th of October. Let's let's not overload things. We still have a long way for our manpower to recover. And while our armies are up and about, our manpower recovery will be hampered. Not gone fully, but it will be reduced by a lot. So let's not slow things down for no reason. There's no rush, honestly. There's plenty of time to do all this. We got the mine here finished. Very good. Should be selling. Oh yeah, we. I think we now have a second thing of iron here. There it is. Heavy infantry discipline. I'm going to keep that extra thing as I did mention before, because having the iron bonus in the capital is probably pretty good. Speaking of bonuses, um, the city of Dictium appears to be reaping the rewards of a particularly good trading season this year. All right. Uh, local tax in Brigantia or. I think I've said before, this uh, this is probably the better option. I think it will go for that. Hmm. Also, our war exhaustion is almost down to zero, which is very good. Love to see it. <sighs> All right, how's Rome doing? They are, uh, they're being Rome, that's for sure. Ooh, what's this? Uh, Garmania is beating, oh, also Turtleton. Well, what is going on over here? Carthage is fighting all of the Iberians at once, it looks like, so that's a great idea. Looks like they are being uh, smacked about by them. A little alarming. Um, hello. Uh, a little alarming. Um, minus four. Yeah, so this is, yeah, like, it's literally one single war. Like, look, look at on the map. These are just all the Iberians. Um, yeah. Jeez. Okay, so Carthage is not doing so great. I mean, we could always attack Carthage. Like I've said before, um, I ultimately just need to boost my my hegemony somehow. And Rome is the scarier long-term enemy. Wakesa Welba died at the age of 77. Head of the Welbia family. Long-time character. Never a super in-the-forefront character, but definitely a background character. Quite a long time. Looks like we need a new researcher. Um, Bane Kalata seems pretty competent. Uh, 14 Charisma, wow. Actually, this is actually the girl I was just looking at earlier, so her um, her Charisma that I noted was very high is even higher than expected. 
Oof. If only that was, uh, if that had been finesse, that was 14, I would have waited to, to put the ring on it with you. Um, I'm actually going to go ahead and put her in the government in a different position because I need that kind of charisma. Um, honestly, possibly even with um, uh, the royal tutor or the uh, chancellor. Monthly Civ change with 14 charisma, that'd be pretty, pretty crazy. Having the uh, aggressive expansion change, again, not a super high priority thing, but this would certainly be boosted. Although, because Diana is such a high statesmanship character, it'd take a long time for, uh, what's her name, Bana to get the same statesmanship. So, I think Royal Tutor, having a, high, a higher monthly SIF change just improves output everywhere in this very fundamental way. I think we're going to go for it. Bana Kalata, welcome to the government. 16 years old. <laughs> so, very good. Um... Looks like she's already married, uh, as expected, the, literally, like, a, a month after she turned 16. She's married uh, this guy who's 10 years older than her. Look, this is what I said would happen, literally, in this game. There's no grace period for when characters come of age. They just get married immediately to the, the nearest uh, unmarried character, so that's fine. This is the Admiral of the Fourth Navy. All right, very good. Uh, your loyalty is pretty secure as well. So now we still need to change the uh, this thing here. Perhaps even with the character that we, um, are you the character that we just revoked? Yeah. I may as well put you in there, because you're the next best charisma character. So we'll put you, we basically just switch them around. So that's good. Um, let's see here. So you're 11, you're 9, 8, and 7. Okay. Got that figured out. <clears throat> but, uh, hmm. Hold on. There we go. I turned my stopwatch off by accident. I always uh, keep a stopwatch running so I can see what time it is during the episode, because uh, that way I don't go too over time. Oh yeah, I forgot to um, start the integration with them. That's fine. We'll start it now. 1st of April, 541. Let's do it. Do you wish to fully integrate the Britannia local power of Brigantia? They will no longer be another nation on the map, but instead ruled directly by our local governors will keep the population in check. Okay. I think this move, more than anything else, is going to signal in the lore of the game uh, Wisenius's intentions to redirect our nation's focus northward after focusing southward for so long on securing Caledonia. Maybe not the uh, Hibernian part of Caledonia, but the Caledonian part of Caledonia. Get our back line in order. And with that in mind, perhaps a war against those northern tribes may be just what the, uh, what the situation calls for. I think we're going to be facing, you know, 2,000, 2,000, 2,000, so 6,000. If we bring up our levies and we send them in, we could really uh, win a, I mean, I always say this, but we could win a pretty straightforward war. The other nice thing is that uh, Wellumiate is not uh, fortified. There's no fort here because there's a dock here. So that would make uh, Taxalia very easy to knock out of the war very quickly. We'd also get a bunch of kind of split apart territory. But we might be able to, in the future, from somewhere like Odadini or wherever we put the capital down here, uh, do colonization up here and start to secure this northern stuff. Plus, for the first time in decades, we may be able to push these missions. This Taxali mission needs us to advance into this province anyways. So, um, hello game. Don't slow down on me, please. Oof, all right, so we got ourselves a plan here. Making sure my recording is not being messed up. It's not. Very good. Come on, game. What's the deal here, computer? Let's not do this, please. That's me. I don't need to look at myself. Carwetia. So, we have a uh, cast a spell in Carwetia. I think we still will have one on Taxalia. Uh, yep, we do. They don't even have one on me. That's kind of goofy. Um, Taxalia might be the better target because I can run into their capital immediately and it has no fort from uh, Brontia. So I think let's go for it. This, I mean, I just said earlier this episode that there's no need to rush things, but I think as we begin to integrate Brigantia, I want to have some newly conquered territory nearby, just so we're doing the economic stuff in Caledonia kind of roughly contemporaneously with its, with itself, um, which isn't a very good reason, but just, I'm just going to go for it. You know what? I'm in charge here. This is my YouTube, YouTube series. I'm going to do what I want to do, so don't, don't, uh, don't judge me. So what I could do as well is not raise the Brigantia levy and just raise the other levies and just have them do it, which may seem like a weird call, but this will largely negate the effect of having my full levy raised 
um, and may allow us to still recover our, our total manpower. Because with every set of soldiers raised up, the manpower total is reduced, which means the bonus of having your manpower uh, recovery modifiers is lessened. So we could go for this kind of small scale operation type deal and then raise the, the larger levy if we ever need to for sure. I mean, with our naval support, should be no big deal. Let's actually check and see. So you have zero ships. You have two ships, okay, and you have zero ships. But you have an unknown number of uh, treasuries between the three of you, which means you could hire mercenary navies, which means I will probably have to boost my... Um, boost my fleet maintenance. Not, nonetheless, that's fine. Um, all right, uh, let's go ahead and get this going. So let's see here. I think we're going to go for this plan. We're going to raise the different levies that are not in uh, Britannia and go for this smaller scale war thing. We should end up with 8,000 and they will have 6,000, I think, is how that should work out. Right, break the army. And then you, the second classes. Bring them on up to, I guess, uh, we'll have everyone hang out in Manalia over here. Uh, should have probably raised them. At Namnetum, but that's fine. We'll just uh, get on the boats from there. And then... You are going to go ahead and... I need a navy to come pick you up. Where's my last levy? Oh, here it is. Uh, let's see here. Come pick us up there. There we go. All right, we, we have ourselves a plan. <laughs> this is probably not a super high priority war, but I feel like doing something a little more straightforward. I'm not as scared about fighting up here compared to fighting um, the Gauls and their infinite amount of space. This, by the way, will be an easier war because it's all provinces that border the ocean and don't border inland provinces. So my naval dominance will give me infinite more um, mobility and kind of strategic advantages than fighting in inland Gaul. Boats. Now you head on over here. You on the boats. All right, up you go. <sighs> Looking pretty good. <clears throat> we are going to start on land coming into uh, Willen Yate just to get Taxalia under control real quickly but then we'll take advantage of our, our naval situation. Although actually what I might do is try and uh, land, or come on into Elianate with uh, maybe uh, two, with half of my forces, and then the other half will go after, um, where's your capital? It's probably this one here, Caledonia, right? I, I'd assume so. Yeah, that's your capital. Is that on the, I think that is, I can land there. I think what I might do with my other half is actually attack Cal Caledonia, and it may seem weird to not go after Linden. Actually, no, I think I will go after Linden, because it is right next to Willen and Mayate, so my armies will be next to each other. This is just a little safer. I could probably be brave and go after Caledonia first, but I, I, no need to play around. Um, this is already a bit of a uh, sort of like risky approach to doing this war without all of my forces raised. But we're giving ourselves like a 4,000, 5,000 manpower cap that's still going to be in existence so our manpower recovery like see we've only lost like 10 manpower per month if we had our whole army raised we'd be losing like 50 60 manpower per month something like that also let's go ahead and uh tell these guys about envelopment tactics and uh, get these all fixed. Ooh, hello get these all fixed over here hello game I don't know how necessary this is, but it feels like a good thing to do. Element tactics. Actually, I have some heavy infantry over here in the Belgica levy, so that's kind of nice to see. Put you on shock tactics, then over with you. Put you on envelopment tactics. All right. Get our forces organized at Manawia, and then we'll launch the attack once we're in position. Hmm. Before I forget as well, because this is the sort of thing I would forget about. we got to take care of this. Although it is down to minus 0.10, 
Oof, is it justifiable to not switch it back? I think it might be justifiable. I think as things improve down here, this will ultimately probably be okay. Because I don't think I'd change it at point 10 to harsh treatment. So I think I will leave that just because it is improving. Over here, that's fine. That's fine. And this is almost fine. So I think ultimately it should be okay. We're going to need to keep this though at harsh treatment. This one is close enough, so we're going to leave it alone. All right. Glad I figured that one out. <clears throat> now, you know what I'm not seeing is um, any air is being produced. So could you two please get on that? I know she's five years older, but that just means she's five years more experienced, if you know what I mean. Lysenius, you rascal, you. Get to it. <laughs> Ugh, all right. Um, let's get everyone organized at Manalia. And then on top. By the way, I'm, I'm really happy I decided ultimately to make Manalia a city. Just because it is so fun to have Manalia be this, um, what's this area called? The this ocean. I don't know what this ocean is called in like modern real life, but to have this be this island um, port town that I can launch this northern attack from, it's just kind of a fun thing. Liberation. The Council of Ohonum has taken it upon themselves to free a sizable quantity of privately owned slaves. Now, why are there slaves in Ohonum? I thought I would have shipped them off by now. Oh, right, because we're producing papyrus. I'd rather you not do this, actually. I'd like to sell that papyrus, please. Um, so I could gain corruption, lose popularity, and gain um, money. Although I'll probably be able to gain popularity basically infinitely with those gladiators if I really want to. Uh, once I have prisoners from the northern nobility. Or turn these slaves into freemen. I don't know what happens unless I don't click this. I guess they stay as slaves. What do we need for this? We need 18? How are we producing two then? Are we just producing two by default? That almost seems to be what it's saying. I guess we'll see for freedom. Okay, we kept the two. That's what I care about. I'd rather have freemen than slaves. But if it meant losing a papyrus unit, I'd rather have the slaves than the freemen. But I didn't lose it. I guess it's just producing two by default. Also, Oconum rolling Papyrus as its resource was amazing. I'm still thrilled about that. Okay, so the the little dock at Manalia is currently harboring the entire uh, Britonic Navy. All 120 ships. Still no attrition, incredibly. I don't know how this is the case, but I guess when they're at dock, there's no attrition. Okay, so let's go ahead and organize this. So who's going where? I think because we're going to be dealing with a siege, I'd rather have the cheaper troops do the, the siege attrition and have the heavier troops going for Wilunyate. So let's have the levies of um, Armorica and, uh, let's see here, Caledonia do the siege. The The combination of Germania with its horses and Belgica with its heavy infantry, this will be a better field army, essentially. So Armorica, get on... I guess I don't care which boat you get on, so get on... The third navy and um caledonia get on i guess the third navy that's fine um so third navy you're going to come uh, around here okay that's a little janky but we are going to do it like this i wish that they had a port around here but once i take well and i'll just come dock in the port and we'll be fine and we're going to have another navy go with you to support you we're going to have um i guess the fourth navy go with you yeah Actually, the way that I'm going to do this is um, I'm going to do it like I do with the armies. Third Navy. Stay there. Let's attach. There we go. And in fact, while we're thinking about it, um, I guess Caledonia, who's the better martial character? You're definitely the better martial character, so you, you lead the way, and then you follow along with your five martial. Okay. And then, now you come around like this. Okay, so now the these two forces, um, we're going to need to click uh, you first. Uh, your marshal's probably worse, but you have the troops I want in the fight first. And then you follow along. Your marshal's actually even worse, to be fair. Okay, so on to the boats you go. Wait, hold on. What did I... I clicked the wrong button. There we go. Nope, not that one. No, it is that one, okay. 
I can't even think with the noise of the storm right now. Jeez. All right, so I need to follow the army of Belgica, not the other army. All right, get off the boats. Detach. Disembark. There we go. Okay. I just need to wait for them to leave, basically. You're not going? Okay, you are going. There we go. Okay, there we go. All right, so now you attach to Belgica. So that's good to know that when there's multiple attachment armies, things get janky. Okay, now everybody on the boats. We're going to go on the second navy, Lugadurum. All right. Now this force is going to come up here. I guess we could actually technically go from our new colony, but I'm not going to worry about that too much. Um, although, actually... Now, I think uh, I think landing in uh, Linden and landing there and, like, attacking both capitals at the same time is still better for a couple of reasons. So let's get everything in position. <clears throat> and our manpower will continue to recover as we do this little war, which is uh, what I wanted to see. Once our manpower is after this war, we'll then deal with going after um, Tyrone. I guess I could go ahead... I'll actually, I'll wait until, no, I'll, I'll get the claim now, because um, it'll take a couple years to generate the claim. <clears throat> I need 20, that's right. Wait till I have 20. And then I do want to target Teronia. They're allied with Car Carnutia. And... Yeah, yeah, this is the smaller war I was talking about before. Let's get that out of the way. Very good. Wait, hold on, I forgot to send you. We'll just send you up like this. <sighs> All this, uh military logistics stuff just adds up over you go getting some line of sight over here as well which is good there we go there we go. now i got 20. Tyrone, should i attack this target instead no there's no difference i think i'd rather target Tyronia because i can go in and grab when uh, Windenum, and then, yeah, alright. Let's get a claim on uh, Aborowikia. Abor there we go. Good stuff. I need to be a little careful, because while they're at sea, we're going to lose a lot of food, but pretty soon we're going to be in position to uh, launch the war. I think I'll also do a landing, because I think it's faster than walking from Ododini. I'm fairly sure at least it'll be faster. Head of the Kalatia family. This guy's a rival of the king, so he's never going to be happy. So I'm not going to worry about him. Governor of Belgica. Definitely going to need the governor of Belgica to be loyal, though. I can't have this be... Because this is currently like on the verge. I think what I'll do is... Um, I need... Okay, I'll... Oh, he has Righteous. Oh, shoot. Okay. <sighs> All right, um, let's see. What's your issue? Power base and major power. Um, can I pay off your veterans? I can once I have money. I don't know how much that's worth, though. How much power base are your veterans giving you? I guess because he's a, a currently a, a, a leading troops, he has currently a lot of um, power base, so I guess that's probably fine. Uh... I think, no, I'll leave it alone. As long as he's following orders, I'm not going to worry too much about having him have perfect uh, loyalty. And with our forces in place, that's going to be it for this episode. Sorry to leave you on a cliffhanger. But next time, we will go ahead and launch our war against the northern tribes, hopefully in one fell swoop, to take on and take out Harwetia, who I may re remind you, we actually formed many decades ago. Taxalia and Caledonia and get into position to then later attack the northernmost tribes of Konawia, uh, sorry, uh, Kornawia and Karnonakia, and have Caledonia uh, proper be under our full control as our integration of Brigantia has now started. Thank you so much for watching, and I will go, I will go ahead, I will go ahead and see you next time.